Hello, everybody. Ron Callis here with another episode of Automation Unplugged. This is show number 63. I hope uh, you're having a great day and a great week. I'm actually struggling with my voice a little bit. I was out. Uh, I'm gonna put the. I'm gonna put the guilty parties on the screen. Oh, you know what? I sent up the wrong one. Let me show you here. I was out last night uh, here in Fort Lauderdale with the the gang from ProSource. So there's all the guilty parties, and uh, we had dinner and uh, went out afterwards to this you know nice place called the Rooftop. And uh, I was out a little bit past my bedtime, so uh, uh, my voice is uh, suffering as a result. So I'll do my best here, but uh, I am excited to be with each and every one of you. Uh, let me come over to Facebook just to make sure that uh, we are actually streaming into the page. Uh, so stand by. Let me see here. Let's see if we're... There we are. We are live. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let me bring in our guest. Uh, we have... Uh, there we go. This is me. And we have uh, a great guest. Uh, we have Matt from Avidia out of Chicago. And actually, Matt is also with Guardian and he's with Alexa Dome. Matt, Matt has his hand in a, a number of different companies. And uh, we're going to have a fun conversation. Matt, how are you, sir? Very good. Very good. Thank you for having me. How is the uh, how's the weather up there in uh, the windy city today? Uh, today is pretty good. Yesterday we had snow, rain, and sun on the same in the same day. So uh, the regular winter in Chicago. Regular winter is it at least above zero degrees Fahrenheit? Yes, it is now. We survived the uh, the deep freeze, and right now we are in thirties. So enjoying summer. Got it. I will. Um... I saw traveling through social media over the last few days, there was a, and I, I think I sent it to you, Matt, there was a, a newscaster from a Chicago television station that yes. uh, uh, put out this hilarious parody of Frozen um, as he was going through the, uh, Chicago and uh, complaining about the cold weather. It was pretty funny. That was, that was hilarious. But All right, we have- When you go through it, it's not very hilarious. Yeah, no, uh, no, I had my share of cold weather. That's, that's why I'm in Florida. Um, uh, JJ says, hi. Hey, JJ, how are you, sir? And uh, let's see here. And Chris Gamble says, hello. I, 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 Hellraiser. I don't know if he's talking to you or me, but uh, one of us is apparently a Hellraiser. Um, I've been known to raise a little hell every now and then. Uh, but I try to keep that to a minimum these days. I'm a married man. I have a 10-year-old son. I have a business to run. So we keep the hell raising to a minimum. Pretty tame hell raising. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, first of all, many of our audience, they may not know you. And uh, I always like my guests to kind of talk about their backgrounds, where they came from, how they entered the custom integration business, and uh, you, you have a particularly you know, fascinating background. And uh, do you mind sharing that with, with the audience? No problem. Uh, Ed Chukowski, I, uh, I own an integration firm in Chicago, northern suburbs of Chicago. We've been in a business for uh, eight years. We are uh, seven people strong at this moment, uh, active uh, evangelists of Control 4 uh, and uh, many other brands. Um, we do, uh, majority of our business is focused about six, seven different zip codes, uh, focusing on a very high-end residential. Um, I have my background in uh, Crestron uh, uh, from back in the day when I worked for other integrator companies before starting my own business. Uh, and uh, somewhere around four years ago, I uh, was introduced to consumer uh, manufacturing and consumer product uh, 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 development. Uh, I joined a venture with uh, Alexa Consumer Products uh, as they were trying to develop uh, DIY home automation products. 
and they had not a lot of knowledge about home automation. So I joined a team to, uh, to assist them with the knowledge and with the, with the product design. And in four years, we have uh, developed two lines of products. Uh, one is Dome Home Automation. Uh, this is a Z-Wave line, a uh, line of Z-Wave accessories for, for DIY systems as well as any uh, uh, commercial systems on the market that, is, that are using Z-Wave. Um, and then uh, in the midst of developing those Z-Wave lines, we developed Guardian. Guardian is a uh, uh, getguardian.com is a water damage mitigation system. And uh, we took that idea specifically from uh, struggling as a CI and security firm uh, with uh, plumbers when you install uh, inline valve controllers to shut off the water. Uh, and we knew that's not the best way to do it. So we developed a product that mounts on top of the water main not requiring security and CI people to cut the pipe and call the plumber, you can basically slide it on. Uh, we made it so easy that uh, we, we focus the product on DIY, uh, but not forgetting about the professional, uh, professional market uh, and allowing them to integrate this with different systems and, uh, and deploy the systems as well. Um, so at this moment, that's you know, my, my own AVDA business and then the products. And what you're looking at is right now the Dome website. Uh, very funky, uh, uh, unique uh, Z-Wave accessories. And when we developed the product, we made it specifically for the CI market functionality. So um, just to give you a couple examples, when, when you look at the motion sensor, it has a, a settings to, to allow the user to change when the motion is going to be activated, how many times per minute, when is the non-motion being activated, sirens of different chimes for doorbells, for opening doors and, uh, and for alarms. Uh, and, and so when we designed the product, we made it easy for consumer, but also usable and advanced enough for the, for the CI, because that's where our heart is really. So that's- And, and, and you story. also, Matt, then are involved with the, the Guardian product, and I'm just flashing that up on the screen. And, and I wanna get more into that, and I wanna get into kind of your, your background as well running uh, a video uh, along with your, your business partner. Um, but what I, I would love to hear just again for the, the sake of our audience and so I'll, I'll try to get there from a different direction. What, what got you into this industry? How did you land in this industry? Why aren't you doing something else someplace else? So my when I when I got out of high school, my dream was to be a car engineer uh, and before I wasted my parents' money, I, I said to myself, you know, I have 12 months of summer, let me try this. So I went work for a body shop, mechanic, other stuff, and I just hated that. I, I realized that I love driving and looking at cars, not, uh, not working uh, with them. So uh, then I was struggling what to do, and one of my friends said, why don't you come work with me? We install speakers in the homes and install TVs. And I said, what, speakers in the ceiling? Uh, and and that would do that. That's, that's crazy. How, that's when I terminated my first component connector and then uh, uh, hang my first uh, uh, Panasonic uh, uh, display plasma. And I fall in love with the industry. Uh, jumped a few companies. Uh, got uh, burned. Uh, introduced uh, to Crestron, bleeding from my hands and my and having some gray hair. Uh, <laughs> you know, got some experience. And till this day, uh, I would say the best uh, market I can imagine to grow and to have fun and challenging, but very fun. So you, you started out on the installation side of an integration firm there in the Chicago market? Correct, very small firm, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, making connectors was uh, the, the clean job for the owner of the company and I was pulling wires. The standard story and then the company expanded I, I i switched to a different bigger company uh where i was project uh uh, uh leading projects i was the lead question programmer then managing all the projects uh, uh then about eight years ago opened my own business in the same uh uh territory uh went kind of back again to you know installation programming sales business management and somewhere between sales and business management, uh, we started the product development as well. I see, I see. 
Okay. So at what point, so, all right, so let's, let's maybe look at first uh, the integration business, because that's what you started eight years ago. So uh, I'm, I, I, now I'm going to bring up that website. Um, and uh, if I can figure out my technology here, uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. All right. Sometimes I'm slow people Just bear with me. And uh, so there, there's the a video website. And so you decided to, to launch this business uh, with your partners. And can you just describe at a high level kind of the characteristics of this business? What type of work do you do? What type of projects do you take on? What's your primary, maybe some of your big bigger lines that you represent? Yeah, so we specialize in custom and semi-custom approaches. Um, back in the day, majority of our business was uh, our partnerships with builders. Uh, we do manufacture our own acoustical panels in-house. Uh, and uh, so a, a lot of the builders uh, included a custom home theater that we designed and, and put together. Um, uh, and beyond that, uh, uh, we were always very good on the integration part. Uh, uh, what we got training of that with Crestron, uh, putting together systems uh, based on Crestron and uh, and doing a full home uh, control. Um, and so, so what we really uh, are good at is the big, big uh, projects with the hardware lighting, with uh, uh, hardware lighting, with with shading, with with uh, you know 24 up and above uh, audio zone distribution system, um, and somewhere in a in the midst of fighting uh, 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 with uh, deploying Crestron systems, we we got introduced to uh, Control Four, and we uh, we opened that branch up, uh, and we learned by 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 trying that we can deploy big systems as well with Control Four. So now we have like kind of two branches. Uh, but our sweet uh, sweet spot is uh, full home integration, uh, and uh, and and we also uh, are finding niche market in the light uh, commercial uh, by deploying uh, control four systems in restaurants. Uh, we deployed I would say five or six uh, very big systems in a residential nightclub scenario. And they came out beautiful. Uh, we really enjoyed doing that, and, and we are looking to uh, expand on this idea as well. Awesome! I just had a request uh, for your. Here, I'll throw it up on the screen. JJ says, "Clean site is crucial. Yours is tight. Who designed that?" Hmm. You know, there is this guy, very hard to work with, uh, but but I, you know, I can I can give you his number. Yeah, you know, uh, we we started working with uh, One Firefly uh, four or five years ago, I would say, Ron. Um, yeah, that sounds and, uh, accurate. As every integrator, we've been uh, challenged by Ron about marketing, importance of marketing. I did not believe in it. I thought that spending this much money per month was a complete waste. Uh, and then I joined uh, consumer product development. I was working with three different marketing term fir firms and I saw the power of branding. I saw the power of uh, uh, digital marketing. And uh, uh, when I got back actively in my business lately, that was the first thing I did. I, I went in, uh, opened Slack uh, account, call Ron, tell him that I will be reaching out to him soon. And uh, and and subscribe to details. Uh, that was the three things that I did. I think in the first and bit off upgrading your uh, accounting system, right? With oh, Steve yeah, I mean, we, yeah, because when we tried to integrate details in, in QuickBooks, we saw how messy our QuickBooks uh, was. So we we and in this January, we last month we started a uh, new QuickBooks with the launch of details. So my hands are still shaking a bit, but uh, we we've done it. We are passed through it. And now we we very soon are going to be introducing new Avidia brand uh, that me and uh, Ron been working on for a long time, uh, and uh, it's going to be a very exciting refresh and a completely new uh, marketing strategy. So, so just a little bit about that because we're gonna you know we are gonna unveil that to the world in the next few months. But just at a high level, your brand of Avidia had been out on the street in Chicago on your vehicles, on your literature, on your business cards. It's been out there for years. 
And yet you and your partner, Camille, decided to uh, really launch into 2019 with a, a refreshed focus on your image and your message. Can you just, you know, why did you do that? What, what kind of, what were your thoughts about updating or refreshing? Whereas I'll just point out many in this industry maybe don't touch their marketing for decades uh, or, or refresh it. So, you know, I, I, I looked back into it uh, and then tried to answer the question why. And uh, what I think is that we start uh, in an in integrator industry as a, almost like a contractors. We work with plumbers, electricians, painters, you know, uh, carpenters. And we think of ourselves as this technology experts, but we are part of the construction business. So uh, somewhere in my head, mentally, I was locked into, I'm just a contractor. Uh, uh, no, electrician is not marketing. Plumber is not marketing. We just, you know, do a good job and hope for uh, 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 the best clients. And then when I started working with the consumer products and I saw the uh, the, the the pride behind the brands, the, the, the team working to build up the brand and the product, I came back and I said, this is no different than what we are doing. Um, uh, the, the image, the marketing of, and, and the, the culture, the, the messaging behind the brand is as important in the local business as it is in a nationwide business. And it's so much easier to do, uh, let me put it this way, it's, it's hard to de develop the brand, but to use the brand and to get the outreach in our small areas, you know, a few zip codes is, is pretty inexpensive compared to a, a going after uh, all 51 states. So um, that's, I think that's where, I, that's where my brain clicked. And I think uh, us as integrators, we, are, we have such a knowledge and, and, and we deal with such a complicated systems that we have to realize that we are so much more than just a contractor. And, and, and we have to do a better job on marketing that to uh, our clients and exposing our knowledge and our capabilities uh, in our local business uh, and local market. No, I, I think that's that's interesting, and uh, and hopefully for those of you out there watching or listening, you know that that perhaps strikes a chord that might cause you to reevaluate. You know, what's the message or the look and the feel that you're giving your existing customer base and all of those people that are then checking you out. Maybe they've been referred to you, but they haven't met you yet. Are you sending the right message? And are you sending a message that you're proud of? And uh, I, I commend Matt and, and Camille for taking a good, fresh, hard look at that. Now, um, as if running an integration firm is not complex enough or wrought with enough challenges, um, at some point a number of years ago, you also took on a, a role in a technology company as their CTO. And if I'm misstating that, correct me. And, and you were developing those dome products. Um, and then you also were developing uh, the Guardian product. And so I'm going to throw that up on the screen. Can you just talk about kind of that balance of the, the do-it-yourself market, which you, you're, you're serving through that company? and the custom market, which you're serving um, through your integration company. So I'll, I'll throw up the, the dome. Actually, you know what? Let me throw up Guardian. Kind of maybe tell the audience what is that? And then, um, you know, we'll kind of look at the do-it-yourself first custom yeah, conversation. So, yeah, so when you look at this video, uh, it's gonna, this is gonna reset. Just keep it there. Uh, I, I think that's uh, a hero shot video. And for those that are gonna listen to this in the future on the podcast, tell what are they seeing here, Matt? Yeah. So, so this is a getguardian.com. So, what you're looking at is the uh, uh, we call it internally blue liver um, because that's what the design looks like. But basically, what it is is an actuator. Look, this is a water main uh, in your home. Uh, you basically close it. You slide in the actuator right on top of the valve. Uh, you clamp the, the little arms with, with your hand. And from now, now going forward, this device can control uh, the valve and will know if it's open, if it's closed. It will know if it gets stalled. And uh, uh, there are leak detectors that you uh, pair directly to the valve controller. And whenever leak detectors detect freezing temperature or water, they will automatically shut off the valve for you. 
and send a notification to a consumer on a, a, a on the app that there was a leak detected. Um, this is a Wi-Fi product, so the Valve controller connects to Wi-Fi to get the reach to the to the app, and the leak detectors are uh, uh, LoRaWAN, so they have uh, extremely long range and uh, a very long battery life. So uh, standalone product that we are right now opening to uh, CI market with the uh, 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 local Wi-Fi API on UDP TCP. And then we are also uh, introducing exclusively to a CI market a device that is called a bridge. And it basically has relays and IOs on it. So you can hook it up directly to a security panel. And when, uh, when you, let's say, when you arm security panel, you can program the panel to close the relay and it will close the valve automatically. And all of that is done wirelessly between that little bridge device and the valve controller. So what we are trying to do is, is give the integrator and a security guy another avenue to make uh, uh, profit on the unique uh, devices like this. And the really cool thing about this is that you're looking at $200 valve controller compared to inline, let's say. Uh, uh, Control 4 has an inline uh, thing, it's not right? Theirs, it's Fortress Z. And the Fortress Z is inline solution, Z-Wave uh, valve that is 750. Uh, plus, you have to get the plumber. Uh, here, we are looking at the item uh, in, in $200 range. Uh, installation for any installer is nothing. It, you, you saw it. You just clamp it on, download the app, and configure it. Uh, so uh, it's a very unique way of making your uh, integration firm stand out with a solution. Uh, so. Um, How does the integrator buy this? Do they they buy the? Do you set them up directly so they can purchase this and you ship to them, or do they buy through distribution? Or how does an integrator? They can, they can set it up directly. If if you guys are looking to test this out, is at ADI uh, on ADI.com and at ADI stores also. Uh, you can find it at Worthington.com uh, uh, and uh, and it's uh, also at. Uh, uh, it's also available on Amazon Business. Amazon Business price is a little bit uh, higher uh, than, than Worthington or ADI, but that's a very convenient way to, to get a unit and try out. Interesting. Yeah, and JJ was just asking here. I think you just answered that. He was saying, how much and is it on Amazon? So uh, this, the unit that we are selling on Amazon uh, for consumers is $399. It's uh, the Valve Controller Plus 3 Leak Detectors Kit. And uh, uh, biz Amazon business uh, price, I believe, is 366 on this. Uh, and, and yes, you will get better margins going through distribution or through uh, uh, directly with Guardian. But as a try to build a confidence for yourself, I, I think that's the most convenient way to just buy it and, and, and give it a, a try. Now, Matt, just aside from this awesome product, which I, I know you have to be proud of, and you have a patent with your name on it. Or, or yeah, related I, have, to um, I build a house and I have a patent, so I think I can. Uh, You're done. You know, what, what is there left? You've got your own patent. That's pretty awesome. Um, what, how do you balance your roles as a CTO for a product company and running an integration firm. I know many integrators probably listening or watching or scratching their head going, how the hell does he do that? I, I chose great partners eight years ago. Um, and that really made a difference. You know, I, initially we started a business with two partners and, and really they made the magic happen uh, in my integration business while I was uh, fighting with China and Brazil, uh, developing a product. You know, when we joined, we thought, we know how the end result should look like. We know exactly what it means to have a good product and how the good product should, should function. We didn't know how to make that product. Um, so I jumped in. I started talking to product development team, building uh, the team together, and then interacting with Chinese manufacturers. Uh, the, 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 the hardest part was the cultural difference between China, Brazil, and US, and myself, I have her Polish roots. Uh, so it was very difficult to manage uh, uh, three different cultures to work together. Uh, uh, but overall, uh, I was lucky to be uh, part of a uh, uh, to be part of a great team of very young and creative people uh, that were not afraid to try and fail and try and fail. And that's where we got ourselves. Uh, uh, I would say number. 
the first on the market standalone DIY uh, water damage mitigation product. Uh, there is a copy on the market uh, uh, that, uh, that, that was trying to do the same thing, but uh, it's hard to compare. Um, and, and the rest of the solutions are in line. So uh, it, it's, but leveraging the two companies uh, was very challenging. And I would say uh, the good thing is that China is awake at night. So um, if my wife is watching this, she will probably, uh, that it's going to be a flashback because it's, it was an uh, integrator during the day, China at night, integrator during the day, China at night. So, uh, and, and then there is Brazil that is about two to four hours uh, time difference. So it was just a grind for a period of time, but it wouldn't be possible uh, uh, without my partner, uh, Camille, and, uh, and, uh, and the great team that I had with me at Alexa. No, that's that's amazing. JJ did uh, post a question, I think, relating to the Guardian. He's saying plastic pipe or copper slash galvanized only. Uh, copper, uh, uh, PVC or PEX, uh, whatever you have. It, the Guardian supports half an inch to an uh, inch and a quarter valve. Uh, hint, hint, uh, uh, later this year or beginning of next year, we'll be coming up with a valve controller that supports the big, uh, big boy uh, inch and a half valve. And for integrators, uh, guys, most of the homes that are above five, 7,000 square feet, they have an inch and a half valve. And I, uh, we internally are talking about making that inch and a half unit exclusively available through Guardian Pros uh, and not being, uh, not selling this through uh, Amazon or, or, or retail stores. And, uh, and the margins, the price on it is gonna be a little bit different. Uh, so uh, we look at this as a, as a way for uh, isolating a line of products just for the pros. Uh, highlighted uh, with uh, security and, and CI market. We are not sure yet how plumbing uh, uh, industry is going to react to it as they really don't have a lot of knowledge about Wi-Fi and technology. So I think this is going to be a great opportunity for security and CI to, to, to take that and deploy the systems. Just out of curiosity, do you know, I'm assuming you do, how many floods are there a year relating to, um, I guess it'd be floods in a home that cutting off the water main would have solved or, or eliminated the flood? So the data, the, damage, the, data is, the data is just blowing my mind every time I mention it. Every day, there is 14,000 claims reported to insurance companies. Every wow. day? Every day. And I will give you my personal experience. I had five leaks in my house since I moved in and they damaged my walls, but I haven't reported a single one because I don't want to deal with the insurance. It was just a stain on the wall. So why, why bother? Hopefully your insurance company is not listening, right? Yeah, or I mean, they would. I mean, I'm <laughs> sure if I, I, I did it, they would, but it was just a hassle. So I just fixed it up and, or I, some of them I didn't, sorry, honey. <laughs> uh, uh, and, and so you can think about 14,000 a day that is there are there are processed through insurance companies. That's probably a double in real life. Uh, number one cause of uh, a leak in the home is a toilet uh, a valve or toilet overflowing. Uh, and that's why we put the top tray on the leak detector to detect the water coming from the top. Uh, and um, there, the number two is water heater. Number three is washing machine. Number four is uh, 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 furnaces. So I, some, some people argue that putting leak detectors around your home, you will have to put 50 of them in order to cover uh, for burst pipes or frozen pipes. But majority of the leaks out of the home are the appliances. Uh, freezing pipes are in a fifth on the list. And we understand the importance of detecting flow uh, uh, to detect the uh, pinholes or, or, or broken pipes. Uh, but we thought that it was more challenging to do wireless sensors and then uh, a DIY installation of the valve, controlling the valve, than it was the flow. So we started with the hardest part to prove to ourselves that we can do it. And we understand that there are other solutions we have to focus on. Let me put it that way. I see. And uh, you flow. mentioned flow. So potentially there's a flow meter coming down the line, perhaps. I mean, it's 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 one of the, the ways to detect water. So, um, so yes. So, but water damage is just outrageous. It causes more damage in U.S. than theft and fire combined. 
That's mind boggling. And how, I mean, this almost see if in, in, integrators are watching or listening, are you currently focusing or ever talking to your clients about flood or flood risk or, or water damage risk in the home? I mean, it, I, I'm imagining that it has been rare that I've heard that as an issue talked about, but yet it sounds like it's a multi, multi billion dollar issue. That yeah. Me as an integrator, I never talk about it. It's, you know, you're too busy trying to sell control for against Sonos or convince them that they should get a speakers here or there and, and or do a home theater or telling them that the sound bar may be not the right solution in a new construction. Right. And, you know, you confuse the client, he's blown away. And then, you know, you, you kind of have to say, and by the way, what about water damage? Uh, so it's exhausting exercise. But Guardian is a perfect way to upsell to your existing client base. Just shooting a marketing email with, you know, and then there's this great company, One Firefly, to shoot those emails with and write blogs. And uh, and, and it's an easy upsell, a uh, quick couple hours installation and testing, and you go on. Awesome. All right. I'm going to completely jump topics here because, believe it or not, we've already been talking for over 30 minutes. Can you, I told you it would go by fast. Um so I'm going to I'm going to change topics. I know as an integrator, uh you are a control 4 dealer and uh you do a lot of control 4 business and I just saw this in the news just uh I think a day or two ago. Uh at a, what today? That was February 6th. Today, oh this is today. But I, I think I heard the news yesterday. Um Control 4 purchased uh the Swiss-based Neo Remote Company. What were your thoughts on this? You know, I have um, two, um, I can look at it from two perspectives as a uh, control four integrator, and also as I mentioned, DOM is Z Wave line. And I have exhibited with this guy's Neo four CES is four CDS, and I know them very well. I've seen them develop the product, I, I met the team, the engineering team, uh, personally, and, and we had uh, interacted. And um, uh, my opinion is that this is one of the best moves Control 4 made in, in years. Um, not only these guys are calm, uh, very detail-oriented. They they had the first beta version of the product years ago, but they every CDI I saw them, they said, no, not yet. It's not perfect enough. And when they released it, it was uh, blo I was blown away by the quality of the product. Uh, we know that uh, Control 4 brand uh, uh, line is very flexible, uh, uh, and, uh, and, and I would say we chose it because it's the most scalable solution. Um, and, and we lack that upsell of a, a good remote control. And I've, we've been selling two $3,000 remote control from Crestron to clients, and they give you a great experience. And, and there are people that are willing to pay that uh, 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 amount for a, a high-end product. Control 4 never gave us that, uh, that luxury. And I hope Neo is going to be that product uh, because the, the team knowledge and what they've done with this remote uh, is, is mind-blowing. So I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing this uh, go live, uh, hopefully this year. I don't know. I, yeah, you know. have you dug in? When, when are they supposed to make this available for dealers to no, buy? They don't disclose. They don't disclose. Um, uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. That's don't. Uh, I, I think a lot of integrators would say that why buy a consumer grade product? I would say to all my folks, integrators, don't panic. Uh, this is a great move. Uh, it will give you another sell tool. It will give you a flexible control and move control forward towards the next step. Interesting. So that remote really fills a, a need that Control 4 had. The, the, the Control 4 did not have an adequate solution for that, that effective handheld remote. And then look at the uh, industrial design, the product design. And when you take it to your hand, it's like Apple product. It's, it's very stiff, heavy, uh, beautiful design, very clear. Uh, UI, GUI is, is extremely nice. I think if they take the, those resources from Neo and apply it in everyday product development for Control 4, I think we're going to see uh, many fruits uh, from that uh, in the upcoming years uh, 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 of Control 4. So I'm very happy with that announcement. Yeah, and uh, JJ, who's watching, by the way, JJ, thanks for commenting and, and watching. I uh, always appreciate your feedback. And uh, and he he dropped the name here, Brett. I think Brett is the. Who is Brett? 
Is Brett the founder of Neo? I see another name here, Raphael Obelheiser. So uh, Raphael is the young guy behind the development as well. Uh, I'm personally extremely bad with names. All my friends will tell you that. It took me two years to remember Ron's name. Um, so, yeah. Kept calling me the Firefly guy. Yeah, Firefly. Not even one, but Firefly. Exactly. It took me four years to make you the number one Firefly. Oh, I, took, I had to earn that. That took a while. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right. A couple more uh, rapid fire kind of topics, uh, Matt. I'd love to get your, your input on. Um, number one is what do you see here in 2019 as, uh, you know, what has you excited? So let me just keep it simple. What has you as an integrator excited about two, 2019? You know, I, I think a lot of people are concerned about the DIY market uh, 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 affecting our business. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited when I do sell pitches to clients, when I present them with idea of smart home, it's no longer me telling them, oh, here is a smart doorbell, that's what it does. And, you, and they, they're wowed that they can get a call on their phone. It's the idea of, well, what about smart doorbell? And they say something like ring. And I say, yes, exactly. And, and they, it's already educated client. They just have to show that there is a better product on the market and uh, there is value in it. Uh, and I personally very happy and very excited for the upcoming years of not fighting uh, up the current on the, on the smart home and, and, and the technologies for home. Uh, is the, the there are billions of dollars dumped into marketing uh, for reg regular consumers uh, to uh, to educate them, uh, and believe me, if, even if a consumer says I don't need this, I can you know just buy wireless Sonos and Amazon Echo and Logitech remote, they will come back in two years, uh, either to help them with the system or to change. Uh oh, it. you you might be picking a fight with JJ here. JJ's watching. I know JJ's uh, just corrected me. Said Brett is with Logitech, so I think Brett's a big uh, Logitech fan. So it uh, might get exciting yeah, here in the next Brett, few minutes. I'm not, I'm, and I didn't say this in this meeting. I said a lot of consumers are trying to do it themselves, and it's not okay. unlike Sonos. I, I I'm a big believer in Sonos but not in the Sonos of a Play One and, and you know, Amazon Echo in a kitchen for music uh, and the consumer doing it themselves and supporting it. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't develop a DIY Guardian if I didn't believe in DIY products. I believe that even if it's DIY, it still requires a professional putting the system together, designing it properly, uh, designing the Wi-Fi uh, backbone that will support it all and giving the customer support. I don't think the DIY products are going anywhere. I think there will be more and more of them. Uh, but us as integrators, we have a great opportunity to make money on the uh, never stopping growing DIY market as the people are realizing that, yes, you can cut the pipe in your house and do a plumbing, but you don't do that. You call the plumber. And, and yes, you can install your own uh, universal remote control or Amazon, but maintaining that is so hard and time consuming that you will need somebody to do that for you. And that's what I'm excited about As we saw this in 2017, 18, and I think it's gonna continue in 19 and on. And a lot of those DIY products will realize the importance of uh, CI market, uh, and they will start releasing a product that are upscale uh, and, and introduce us with better troubleshooting diagnostic tools and probably better margins and maybe exclusivities, uh, and, and the market will adjust. Uh, they thought they can go, uh, uh, they, they, I think that the market thought that they can eliminate the integrator, uh, but they they will learn the other way, in my opinion. No, I, I, I agree. And uh, JJ just posted a comment here. He says, everyone designs for their audience. Audience chooses, options are healthy for our industry. Exactly, amen to that. Yeah, I, I concur. Um, last question for you, uh, Matt, and, and of course, if you have anything else you want to share, feel free. But, uh, you know, a lot of the audience here that listens either live or post-show or listens post-show are integrators or people from the CI industry at varying, you know, positions or levels. Um, do you mind giving any advice? You, you've been at this both as an installer and as a business owner um, for a good number of years now. And uh, what sort of advice or, or 
or observations do you, could you share with others that might maybe help them, give them some words of wisdom? And I would like to make a disclosure before I start that no, Ron that did not tell me to say this, but I, I would like to, uh, I'm going through experience of defining goals and, and values for the company. And I always thought that's, that's such a BS uh, and, and you just put it on the website and then you forget about it for your clients to read. But after doing the exercise, defining the core values of the business, looking down and, and really thinking about the business and, and why I do what I do, change, made a huge difference for myself and my partner. Uh, so I would say if you haven't done it yet, I'm sure, you know, I, I was late to the game as a eight years in business, but if you haven't done it yet, Focus on it and do this. Uh, uh, sit down with your team and 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 work on the definition of your business. Second uh, thing, and as, as I mentioned before, I think a lot of people are afraid or or or, or angry on the DIY market. Don't be. Uh, keep your head up and, and provide the best service, and and our you know your company will feel it in the long term. And I know our market is struggling with uh, uh, finding people, right, technicians and, and uh, workforce. Don't be afraid to give it a try to millennials. Uh, let them burn, coach them. I think they are, uh, I'm a millennial myself. I know it's, it's exhausting and, uh, and hard to, uh, to, to adapt. Tell me about it. No, I'm just millennials. <laughs> and, but, but there are ways of doing it. And, uh, and just give it a try and, and you know, don't, don't panic. Uh, they have to adjust as well. Uh, I'm going to sneak in one more question, Matt. And that is, I, I know that you and your partner have recently been going down this path of recalibrating your company finances and chart of accounts uh, in order to, to use this. Uh, I believe, and re correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're going down this path of of adopting this kind of dashboard methodology of running your company finances. Can you just talk for a moment about that? It, have you done that? How hard is it? Uh, where are you at on that path? We have, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have deployed details. With details, we deployed new QuickBooks, and we when we deployed the new QuickBooks, we've done it in a way where we can work uh, with the with the reporting system. We had few discussions already uh, uh, with with Stephen Paul, and uh, we are uh, uh, very likely going uh, uh, to uh, to work with them uh, because we are uh, hungry for data and understanding where are our profits going, uh, why uh, we have ex uh, as much profits as we do have, uh, and and expanding that. Um, but at this moment, we are just uh, uh, challenged with, uh, with the, the changes. So we, we did all the changes I just described with branding in the last two months. So the, our business was highly affected by it. I think the clients are still waiting for proposals as we launch details. Uh, so we want to do it in stages. But, uh, uh, but I would so say- So that's on your roadmap for 19. Yeah. Is it's worth the exercise and uh, the team has been excellent. Uh, Jennifer, uh, the you know in that team she's managing the QuickBooks uh, uh, deployment. She's a busy cookie, uh, but she's very knowledgeable in in the industry and especially in QuickBooks. And there is no answer, uh, no question she cannot answer. Uh, uh, and for now, uh, I did not interact with Paul and Steve much, but uh, to what I uh, know them, they're they're excellent resource for knowledge for building a business. A hey. Men and uh, I, I want to post is actually a, a nice long comment uh, here on Facebook, folks, that I'm going to throw up on the screen. It's long, so I don't know actually how well if I'm going to be able to throw that up there. Uh, let's see. Boom. So I'm just giving a shout out to JJ and Chris. They do a, a weekly uh, let's see here. We would love to get your feedback and engagement. 3 p.m. Central Facebook, the digital ramble show. And um, it's a great show. I've, I've listened into JJ and Chris uh, a good number of times. And there's always great content there. So if you're out there listening or watching, certainly uh, check out their content. And uh, if we need any more links, we'll add them to the show notes. But uh, on that note, Matt, Thank you, sir, for taking time out of your, your busy day. I know that uh, talking pre-show, you were maybe a little 
nervous is not the right word, but you were a little concerned about how it would be to be live. And uh, how do you feel it went? You feel that uh, the last 45 minutes you survived? You know, it's like carrying babies to fire. When I look at you, we have like, eye contact, you know, <laughs> like you can carry me through it. So it's okay. always about your run. That's that's funny. I, I love it. Um, <laughs> Awesome. I just got a shout out here. So, all right, Matt. Well, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. Uh, you're you're doing an awesome job there at Avidia, you and Camille and the team, and uh, and of course with Guardian and Alexa and Dome. You're you're a busy bee. I think you're a perfect model of the American dream. Someone that's ready to hustle and work their butt off and achieve great things. So, uh, I commend you and uh, and great job. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me, and uh, and uh, and the same to you, sir. All Likewise, marketing. one firefly. Go one firefly! All right, ladies and gentlemen, so that is a wrap on show number sixty-three. That was Matt from Avidia, and 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 all the other exciting things that he's doing, and um, I do have uh, we have a packed schedule this spring. Uh, really now through the balance of the, the next, uh, I think three to four months, we've got pretty solidly booked for automation unplugged guests. Uh, so my team's really been hustling. Uh, you know, my, uh, I appreciate my day job one firefly for sponsoring this show and enabling me to do this. And my team over at one firefly, um, for really just doing such a, a standout job, particularly Elizabeth who does me with a lot of the scheduling, uh, here with Automation Unplugged. So stay tuned. Uh, I am going to remind you, in case you did not remember, we are now on Instagram. Uh, we just launched our Instagram back in September, and uh, we've got just around 440 people or so following us now on Instagram. So we keep that pretty active as well, of course, as our Facebook page. And uh, always keep an eye on that. And uh, on that note, if you want to find out more about One Firefly or you want to talk to me directly or talk to my team, there's our information, our website, and our phone numbers. And uh, on that note, make it a great day. I appreciate you tuning in, and I will see you next time. Thanks, everyone.